What is up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Thank you guys all so much for tuning in. We've got the League Tournament going on tonight featuring new cards from Cosmic Eclipse. Thank you guys all so much for being here. Should be a fun event. We've got somewhere between 10 and 20 players. Natalie is not here, so I apologize if I am a little bit frazzled tonight trying to get the tournament going on. Natalie will be at home moderating, but not here. She's sick, so we're all hoping that Natalie gets better soon. And we are getting started with round one, Full Grip Games League Tournament. We've got Melvin Davila on the left with Reshiram and Zekrom Tag Team GX, and it looks like Cody Gray on the right, potentially with a Malamar deck. He started Jirachi. It's a great start. And as we take a look through his deck now, yes, this is a Malamar deck. Now, pretty familiar with Cody's playstyle. He does like to spice things up with very unique lists. So I'm wondering if maybe there are some interesting inclusions in this Malamar deck or if it's just going to be straightforward business. We see he gets the ink out of his deck, Pokemon Communication, then he's going to use Acro Bike, discarding Malamar, getting a second ink. He's already got two Malamars in his hand as well and still has a Lily and a Stellar Wish at his disposal. So he will choose to Lily first, I believe, for a draw of four or so. Five. And see what his hand has got going on. It looks like he might have another Pokemon Communication. He's going to Acro Bike, discarding Giratina. Instant discard there on the Giratina. Easy pick. Could send that to the discard pile and use Distortion Door to bring it back next turn. It looks like he's going to go in with Stellar Wish, finds a Pokemon Communication and a Mysterious Treasure. Great finds. And I'll take a look at his hand. He does have a couple of Psychic Energies as well. He's going to use a Mysterious Treasure to ditch a Psychic Energy and get himself... Maybe another Inke. I do see the Lunala Prism Star is in his deck, which could be big for dealing a lot of damage to a Pokemon that might already have uh, some energy on it. I think uh, the Lunala Prism Star does damage for the amount of energy in play. So Reshiram Zekrom does usually load up quite a bit of energy. That might be something that we see, but I think that you know primarily it's going to be Cody just trying to set up Malamars and use Giratina to attack turn after turn. Melvin has got a hand with Ents Resolve in it. He's going to go in with Cherish Ball. Now, Malamar is definitely one of my concerns uh, for Reshiram as an archetype. Like, can Reshiram keep up with the non GX threat that is Malamar? Uh, dealing that damage turn after turn with uh, Giratina from Lost Thunder. So many GX targets on the field for Malamar to really prey on. And I'm thinking that this could be a troubling scenario for Melvin. I haven't seen a Reshiram and Zekrom list yet that can compete with Malamar. I don't know if there's a, a great option here for him. He's got some Fires and Lightnings in his hand. He's going to ditch the whole hand away, discarding a Cynthia and Caitlyn as well as uh, an Ends Resolve. So I wonder what supporter he's digging for or what he's looking for in particular. He's got Tapu Koko Prism Star in this hand as well as another Reshiram Zekrom, but no Ends Resolve or anything. I'm wondering if maybe Melvin might have been a little bit safer off just... Uh, Diving in with Cynthia and Caitlyn there first. He's got the Tapu Koko Prism Star. He can't bring a Lightning Energy back from the discard pile with that. And also another Reshiram Zekrom in his hand, but no draw cards. So he is just uh, going to pass. And I feel like, you know, at least with the Cynthia and Caitlyn there early, maybe he could... Uh, just ensure that he's going to see a little bit more of his deck. It's really unfortunate just a day day change and find no supporter here. So, you know, maybe next turn he can still Fabled Flare Bolts for a decent amount of damage. But if Cody is putting on pressure with a turn two attack from this Giratina, who we see coming out of the discard pile now with that Distortion Door ability. 
then Melvin's going to be in a really compromising situation. So, see Cody going in with Stellar Wish, finds himself on a skateboard, which is good. He can move the Jirachi to the bench with that. Should be very valuable. Um, and then we'll see if he's actually got the energy he needs. He chooses the Mysterious Treasure, so he might already have a switch target. Uh, he does have switch in his hand. He's going to Mysterious Treasure away the second energy, and we see that he does have two energy in the discard pile now with two Malamars out. So, three Malamars now. Uh, so Cody has got the dream set up for a Malamar player. Three Malamars on turn two going first. And Cody actually did not switch. So he needs to find a switch card. Opted to grab the Mysterious Treasure instead of the escape board off of that Jirachi. And if he doesn't find an escape board or a switch, he will miss the attack. So he does find the escape board, never punished. And he's got an Acro Bike and a Spell Tag. Cody almost forgetting the Psychic Recharge is like, all right, Pump Fake, yep, not yet. We're going to need to do this thing for Psychic Recharge twice to the bench. Now he's good to retreat. And I wonder if we're going to see that Spell Tag come down as well. This is an absolutely incredible start for a Malamar deck. I mean, this is the dream come true. Everything Cody wants, he's got... And he's even got a spell tag if he wants to just, uh, you know, flex a little bit harder. Absolutely amazing start for Cody. And I'm not sure that Melvin is going to be able to do too much to stop this aggressive start. Just getting 130 damage placed onto his tag team Pokemon right out of the gates. And Melvin does not even have a draw card in his hand, so he's just going to be eating that attack for lunch. And we'll see if he's got a way out of it. He does find a Welder, so he can accelerate some energy. He is going to take a knockout this, this turn. I mean, he's got the cards he needs. He's got a Lightning Energy in his discard pile. He can Welder to the bench, attach Lightning to the active. Uh, he got a welder to the bench Reshiram for sure. And he gets to draw three cards. Ditto Prism Star, a Switch, and a Cynthia. So that's good. He does see some more draw cards. We are actually going to get to see a game. He's got the Ditto Prism Star going on the bench. That spell tag will make quick work of the Ditto Prism Star. Very unfortunate if Cody decides to place all four damage counters there. And we see... Melvin actually opting to load up his benched Reshiram and Zekrom. And it looks like he may go in and switch. Um, and then use Tapu Koko Prism Star to attack with a fresh Reshiram and Zekrom this turn. I think this is fine. There's not really <clears throat> a lot of ways to polish up this board state with the Reshiram deck. Reshiram and Zekrom Tag Team GX was made to deal a ton of damage to uh, GX Pokemon. When it's up against these non-GXs, just kind of feel bad. Now, something Cody could have done, he maybe, you know, might have been able to put that 40 damage from the Giratina attack on some other Pokemon so that Melvin would have needed an extra energy in order to take this knockout with Fabled Flare Bolts. We'll see where Cody decides to put damage counters he's going to put three onto the ditto so heads up play from cody recognizing that he can take the knockout on the ditto with giratina's distortion durability melvin's going to move up a prize but not for long i mean cody can easily take that ditto out making it so the melvin will never get to evolve up into a naginate out and then we might have to see Melvin rely on Tapu Koko Prism Star in order to get an attack with Fabled Flare Bolts next turn. And at this point, Cody has got to be pleased with how much energy he has been able 
to, or not how much energy, how much damage he has been able to ramp up on Melvin's board. We see almost, I mean, every single Pokemon has a damage counter on it. That's just fantastic news. Taking out the Ditto Prism Star as well. It goes to the Lost Zone. Always kind of funny figuring out where is the Lost Zone exactly. I think it's somewhere underneath the GX counter, but what's hilarious is the Lost Zone actually existed before GX counters did, so... It's like, you know, now we put the Lost Zone as, like, underneath the GX counter. But before, it was kind of like this weird space next to a stadium or, like, maybe off the mat entirely. Uh, it's just so long as it's not near anything else, it's, uh, you know, it's usually pretty good. I've actually had judges ask me to move my Lost Zone from out from under the, uh, the GX counter. They told me that they were confused as to, like, what my Pokemon was doing under the GX counter. I'm like, that's the Lost Zone, right? <laughs> Uh, and they're like, can you move it off your mat entirely? Sure, you know, you got it. That's fine. Looks like, uh, looks like Cody's using an acro bike now. He's got a Giratina back in play. Bouncing back that he is going to surely use Shadow Impact with. Oh, and, uh, did Cody take a prize or did Cody not take a prize? I can call Sean and make sure that uh, Cody did take a prize. It's fine. Let's see. Oh, he's uh, he's in the middle of shuffling. All right, all right, all right. Cody, up. Oh, it's almost irreversible. All right. Did ask Cody if he took his prize for the ditto. <laughs> Just ask Cody, who's at the stream table, if he took his prize for his ditto. I think he did. Yeah, yeah. Just. Oh, is it Aaron who's out front? Yeah, all right, he's, he's good to go then. All right, no worries. All right, yep, see ya. All right, we're good, chat. He took the prize. He just took the one. Man, don't scare me like that, chat. I have to call Sean. Natalie's not here to watch, so I have to, you know, I have to call somebody who's out in the main lobby and actually ask <laughs> in order to communicate. Usually Natalie's out there. You know, watching the game, making sure that uh, nothing irreversible happens. But uh, we're all good. Play ball. Cody also looks like he's running great catchers in his Malamar deck. That's pretty nice inclusion there. Allowing him to chase down those tag team threats on the bench and take knockouts. I mean, Malamar was really strapped for space and not able to find... Room for custom catchers in previous lists, but great catcher, a uh, great addition to the Malamar arsenal. And we see uh, Cody actually is going to opt to chase down that damage tag team right now. So he is bringing up the Reshiram on the bench, saying, I'm not playing any games. We're bringing up this thing. Uh, it's got 140 damage on it, plus the 130 from this attack here. And Cody is going up. Uh, to take three prizes. So he's only going to have two prizes remaining. That is wild. I mean, this is the absolute dream game for a Malamar player. I mean, he could not be doing any better. I, I could not have handcrafted Cody's board position to be better than this. If you ask me what exactly do I want to have him play as a Malamar player, this is it. Uh, this is turn three. And he did turn two, 130 damage. Uh, turn three, sniped a ditto for knockouts and gusted up a damaged Reshiram and knocked it out. Absolutely amazing turns here from Cody Gray. Melvin's got, uh, you know, keep in mind, this is now Melvin's third turn of the game. You know, since he's going second. Uh, he's only had two turns to play up until this point. He's already lost three prizes. So he's in a really tough situation. Melvin's going to go in with the Viridian Forest. Discard a another Lightning Energy so that he can Tapu Koko Prism Star for two. And Melvin's just looking to save face at this point. I'd say if I'm Melvin, I'm just trying to take some knockouts. And, uh, you know, so at least I don't get, like, you know, 6 would We're going to try and take at least half the game's prizes. Save a little face, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, for appearance's sake. 
just uh, make it as close as we can. But at this point, you know the writing's on the wall. Like, we're going to play Cynthia. Uh, you know, he's staring down at the Malamar board position. And with a deck just centered around tag team Pokemon, looking at this Malamar board state, you just know that there is no disrupting this board state. This is an invincible board state for a Malamar player. Uh, there is not enough sniping effects in the Reshiram Zekrom deck to deal with this appropriately. I mean, if Melvin were to like ends resolve and use cross break GX in the same turn, he could do 170 snipe to two different Malamars, I guess, and take two prizes. But even at this point, you know, Cody's board is still probably solid enough that it's not going to matter. We see Melvin discarding an energy switch with his giant hearth, and he's going to get a couple of fire energies out of the deck. He's already attached for turn to the benched Reshiram and Zekrom. We see only getting one, so maybe most of his fire energies are accounted for. He is using the Mysterious Treasure. He wants to get a Naganadel into play, and I would like to see Melvin get a Naganadel into play as well. I'm not sure how many attacks he's going to be able to stream without one, so we do see a Poiful come down onto the bench, and with Tapu Koko Prism Star, Melvin will have the energy he needs to take a knockout. He only has to discard two. I'm assuming probably going to discard both Lightning, and he will be able to stream attacks until the game is over, but the game could be over relatively quickly. Um, Cody does not have spell tag on his active Giratina this turn, but if he did, then the Dedene on the bench would just be a spell tag and a gust away from losing Melvin the game. Dedene GX... With Great Catcher in format, Dedenne GX is more of a liability than it ever has been before. I've seen so many games lost on Dedenne GX in this current Cosmic Eclipse format, and I think that uh, you know decks are either going to have to figure out how to make Dedenne less of a liability, or you know play less Dedenne altogether. And I think uh, we're starting to see that. There's been a rise in slow decks that really uh, make a use out of Mallow and Lana to just tank and heal and don't rely on getting quick starts with the Dene GX. They just uh, are kind of grindier and, and slower decks that have an emphasis on healing. And the reason is Malamar. Uh, with multiple Mallow and Lana in deck, you can just uh, glance off hits left and right and make it so that the Malamar's damage never adds up. With the Tag Call engine, it is relatively easy to find your Mallow and Lana's turn after turn and make it so that you can just use that supporter, uh, you know, especially into cards like Jirachi. So good to Mallow and Lana into a Jirachi with an escape board, Stellar Wish, and just go back swinging uh, again and again. And we've seen decks like Arceus Dialgopalkia really make use out of that Mallow and Lana strategy in this Cosmic Eclipse format if you've been playing online at all. You've definitely seen it. Looks like Cody is going to discard the new Mimikyu. That card is absolutely incredible as well in Malamar, shutting down Pokemon GX's abilities that have damage counters on them. And of course, Malamar places damage counters on everything so, you know, really relevant card there. We see Cody attaching an energy to this Lunala Prism Star and using Lana's Fishing Rod, another cool tool that Malamar gets in its arsenal with Cosmic Eclipse. Lana's Fishing Rod shuffles a Pokemon and a tool card from the discard pile back into the deck. Nice for some versatility if you want to get some of your one ofs back. Malamar does play a decent number of one of cards. And getting them back can be very valuable. Also, it gets back a spell tag, which is super cool. 
And we see Cody using Cynthia. He's going to shuffle up and draw six cards. And I wonder who he's going to attack with this turn. If he's going to save the Lunala Prism Star, go in with Giratina this turn. I think that's fair. Just Giratina and a spell tag. Save the Lunala Prism Star for finishing off the game if you have to. We do see Cody opting to go back in with the Giratina. I think this is the safest play here. And then I think putting a spell tag on the Giratina is the best bet. Give yourself a little bit more snipe damage as well. He's still got the Stellar Wish. Cody's deck is drawing absolutely beautifully. Vince Mallow. Thank you so much, Vince Mallow, for the sub and for supporting the channel. I appreciate it. We see Cody eyeing up that great catcher. And with that great catcher, he will be able to take game on the following turn. Stream deck machine broke again, guys. I don't I don't know. I don't know how to fix it, guys. I just I pressed whooper once and it sent like a hundred whooper commands. I don't know how that works. But yes, I am very hyped. <laughs> Sorry about that flood of whoops, chat. It looks like Cody is going to be coming in with that Giratina. And actually opting to Great Catcher up the Dedenne now. He's going to be 10 damage short of game. But I guess he's just preemptively hitting the Dedenne and saying, you know what? I, I don't think you have a way to heal this Dedenne. And Cody's wager is correct. I don't think Melvin does have a way to heal this Dedenne. But if Melvin did have a way to scoop up the Dedenne, Cody would get very punished for this play. Uh, I think also, you know, I'm not exactly sure why the spell tag didn't come down. I think the spell tag coming down kind of puts Melvin in a checkmate scenario where, like, if, uh, you know, if Melvin takes the knockout on the Giratina, then uh, then it's game. So, you know, people in the chat are pointing out, yeah, Melvin could tingly return. Uh, it's certainly an option. If Cody does not have a switch card in his hand, then tingly return could buy Melvin a turn and erase an attack altogether. Looks like Melvin is going to welder to his bench Poiple, really just kind of offering up this to Denny and saying, I hope I find a switch. He doesn't have a switch. He does have a ton of energy in play now. But with no switch, I think that he might just be out of luck with this Dedenne trapped in the active and unable to retreat. And Cody's masterful setup with Malamar is probably going to be emerging victorious. We'll see if Melvin's got any tricks up his sleeve, but I'm thinking that this is probably it. For this one, it does get to charge up though. Save a little face. Just say like, all right, you know, at least we had a pretty nice looking board set up here at the end. But with Cody only needing two prizes remaining and a Dedenne GX in the active position with 150 damage on it, it's looking like that's probably it, folks. Melvin's got no playable cards in his hand. And it's got to be a pass. He can't move the Dedenne. And then Cody just uh, Shadow Impact game. And that'll be it. Round one of the Fulgrip Games League tournaments. Unfortunately, Melvin not able to get there versus Cody's Malamar deck. Cody's Malamar deck had an absolutely amazing setup. We'll get Cody back here to talk a little bit about his match and uh, what he thinks about Malamar in the new Cosmic Eclipse format. Thank you guys all for being here. We'll be right back. Yo, we got Cody just won his first round of the Full Group Games League Tournament. How you doing, Cody? Good. And uh, Malamar this time around. Uh, I've been seeing yeah. you with a lot of spicy you know, <laughs> spread decks, but uh, why Malamar? Uh, I've been playing Malamar variants for a while off and on. I just seem like the right play. All the new stuff it got with the uh, Blacephalon and all that. And we saw you playing 
All the new toys in the deck. Uh, you got Placephalon, I saw the Mimikyu, and Lana's Fishing Rod, uh, as well as Lunala, Prism Star, and some Great Catchers, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So uh, do you think Great Catcher's a card that uh, you're going to be liking in Malamar? I like it. I like it better than the Custom Catchers from the before, because you don't have to dedicate four slots to it, and you can also use it to throw in Garakinos and Energy in the discard and stuff. For sure, for sure. Now we saw you set up that deck, no problem. Three Malamar, turn two, attacking with Giratina. Uh, do you feel like you know Malamar has any consistency issues, or you feel like you're setting up most games and it's not a problem at all? I'd say I set up a good 70 to 80% of the time. I play four Jirachi and four Acrobikes, so that tends to help with consistency a little bit. For sure, for sure. Some lists are skimping on those. I'm definitely a little bit guilty of that. <laughs> and then we'll like throw my hat when the deck doesn't set up. So uh, that's totally fair. And uh, is there any matchup that you're worried about facing with Malamar? Or do you feel like you got pretty well-rounded matchups across uh, the board? The mill metal thing is kind of scary. With uh, like if they get off at GX, I'm doing like 50 less for everything that I attack. And right. I'm not doing like three, four shot and stuff. <laughs> so so any sort scary. of tanky deck that yeah. can heal probably going to be. So, you know, mildly problematic for Malamar. But yeah. anyways, you made it look great, and uh, it was exciting to see you show off some of the new cards in the matchup. Good luck in the rest yeah. of your rounds. Thanks. Yep. Getting ready for the second round of the Full Grip Games League Tournament, we've got Jesse Parker on the right versus Andrew Barlow on the left. Jesse Parker, let me know. He was playing a Reshiram and Zekrom deck, so it's going to be our second Reshiram deck that we see on stream so far, and we'll see if Jesse maybe has some better luck uh, setting up than Melvin did. Andrew Barlow did not reveal which deck he was going to be playing, and it looks like he has got a Guard of War and Sylveon tag team deck. Uh, I went up to Barlow and I asked him what deck he was playing before the tournament, and he looked at me and he said, a deck. So no leaks on Barlow's side. He didn't want anyone teching for his deck at the league tournament. He has got Gardevoir Sylveon, which should be pretty well poised against this Reshiram deck. I mean, it could go either way. If Barlow struggles to set up, then Jesse could set up some big one-hit knockouts and, uh, and take some quick prizes. But if Andrew Barlow starts using Kaleido Storm, then Jesse is going to be in a bad situation because Kaleido Storm can one hit KO the Reshiroms because of the fairy weakness on Dragon type Pokemon. So we'll see how this matchup goes. It could be a quick one with, uh, you know, potentially Reshiram facing another rough matchup at the Full Grip League tournament. Uh, and especially if Andrew Barlow slapped a Dragon Charm into his Gardevoir and Sylveon deck, Jesse could be in for a real tough time. Uh, Andrew Barlow uh, looks to have a pretty good opening hand. I mean, he's got Faba in the opening hand, Pokegear, and he's at least got some playable cards, so probably not going to be a super dead start uh for andrew barlow which is what jesse has got to be hoping for with this matchup now i'm thinking that jesse might be playing the uh might be playing the blacephalon gx in his version of the deck i think if jesse wants to have a chance to win this game he's gonna have to rely on blacephalon gx to do the heavy swinging in this matchup. I'm always so, uh, <laughs> anytime a player brings out a phone on stream, I'm like, bro dog, you on, you know, you on stream, bro. Like, don't, don't be showing off your DMs on stream. All right, Jesse's gonna be going first. At least he's got that going for him and starts double poiple. So that's a great start for Jesse. He's got the ultra space as well. His hand is looking pretty good. Dedene GX. And is that a Volkner in his opening hand? It is a Volkner. So he's going to have an opportunity to find a Lightning Energy and maybe a item card there. Volkner, an interesting inclusion in the Reshi Rom decks. Helps you find those Lightning Energies for your Reshi Rom's attack and also just gets you cards like Tag Call, which are great for just setting up the game. 
Uh, I think that since Jesse is going first, he might actually be able to win this game against Gardevoir and Sylveon. If he can just get a quick Fabled Flare Bolts, uh, this matchup could just be over before it really gets started. It's going to depend on whether or not Andrew Barlow plays that Dragon Charm for sure. And we see Jesse going straight for the Reshiram. Maybe he doesn't play the Blacephalon GX. Either way, doesn't look interested in getting a Blacephalon GX into play. Just going for the Reshiram. He's got Tapu Koko for some start in his hand. Another fantastic start. Uh, starting Pokemon to have since finding the Tapu Koko Prism Star can be one of the hardest things to do. And he's going to discard Lightning Energy, getting a Cynthia out of the deck as well into the discard pile, just hamming through this deck. And we see a Fire Energy, a Beast Energy. So he does maybe play a Blacephalon. That or the Beast Energy could just be for Naganadel GX. I think that Jesse does run some Naganadels. We saw one in his opening hand. So he's going to be using that uh, that Ultra Conversion ability potentially throughout the course of the game. But the thing about the Naganade LGX, also weak to Fairy. I mean, this whole deck seems weak to Fairy. Really. We're going to see how quickly Jesse is able to set this deck up. And we do see Barlow actually already eyeing up that Megalopunny and Jigglypuff in his hand. He's got... That is a potential option as well. If Jesse puts too many Pokemon GX into play, that could really come out to bite him. We see Jesse does get three Poiples into play turn one. That's a fantastic start. Really as good as Jesse could possibly hope. I think he probably is just going to go for the Coco here. I wouldn't imagine why not. I couldn't imagine, you know, uh, any other need to save it. I think you could just let that Coco fly. You know, get the energy you need onto your Reshiram and Zekrom. He's even got the U-turn board. What a hot draw for Jesse. Fun fact, Jesse also just earned his invite to the 2020 World Championships. So he does have the 500 championship points required in North America to get an invite to the World Championships. Jesse built his World Championship invite primarily off of local tournaments. He did have a couple of day two regional finishes in there, but mostly just champing out those league cups and league challenges. So major congrats to Jesse on building his world invites, you know, primarily off of locals. The dream can come true. And this is Jesse's first invite to the world championships as well, I think. Uh, no, he got it last year. I think he did get it last year, right? Pretty sure he did. Um, either that or he was close. Uh, Jesse really hasn't been playing that long. Last year, I think, was his first year. And I don't remember if he uh, got his invite last year. But either way, this is definitely the fastest Jesse has ever gotten his invites. Yeah. He did get it last year, Natalie confirming. He had his invite last year. World Championships is going to be in London this next year. I'm very excited. I've never been to Europe, so... Hoping to get that world invite of my own. Uh, I am not quite as far along as Jesse. <laughs> I'll just leave it there. But I, uh, you know, I'm still cruising them. It looks like that is a dragon charm on the active Guard of War and Sylveon. So Jesse's got to not be stoked about that. Andrew Barlow building up his board position with two Gardevoir and Sylveons. A dragon charm on his active. That is... So rough for Jesse, and I'm wondering if Jesse has any way to deal with the Dragon Charm or if he is just going to be stuck by this. I'm hoping that there is a Blacephalon GX in this deck, but we will see. Jesse could potentially gust up the one with the energy on it, knock it out. I mean, that honestly... I think Andrew Barlow might have been safer putting the Dragon Charm on the benched Gardevoir and Sylveon. Because that is where his energy is hoarded up. Jesse could play a Lysander Labs. I doubt he does, though. 
We do see him going in with the Volkner. I wonder what item he's looking to grab off of Volkner that'll help him dig out of this scenario that he's in. I know Jesse does like tech cards. He's actually going for the Stadium Nav. Or is he going for Great Catcher? Could be either one. I think I do see a Stadium Nav in his deck. Potentially. We'll see, the Stadium Nav, I would be very surprised. But I guess with the Volkner engine, Stadium Nav can make more sense. It's not a Stadium Nav. It was a tag call. I'm sorry, guys. They're similar colors. The tag call and the Stadium Nav, both orange orangish yellow I thought I had seen a tag you know a stadium nav in his deck it was just the tag call so he does use Volkner get a lightning energy and tag call into his hand and it looks like he's going to use ultra space evolve the active Poiple into a Naginate Elf from Lost Thunder and then he needs to figure out how to get around this dragon charm. I mean, he is really walking a tightrope here. The longer he waits, the more opportunities he gives Andrew Barlow to just get the great catcher and bring up that Reshi Ram on the bench and take it out of commission with a Kaleido Storm. That would be absolutely horrible. Jesse going in with another Cherish Ball. He's search for GX. I'm assuming he's going to get a Naginate LGX and start using Ultra Conversion to draw more cards. And we see Jesse also has a Pokemon Communication. He's just eyeing up his hand. He's going to get the Reshiram and Zekrom out of his deck, maybe looking at building up a second one, and at this point I'm pretty sure he is not running Blacephalon GX, or at least it's not in his deck. Seems to just be favoring the Reshi Roms here with the Beast Energy going on to the Poiple. But no Naginado. So he's just going to retreat into Dene, and I think probably going to see a pass. I mean, did Jesse have uh, energy in his discard pile to charge up? No, he did not. So a weird turn for sure from Jesse, where he just has to try and jockey for position, but he doesn't really have a whole lot going on. Andrew Barlow clearly in the driver's seat here with the Dragon Charm on his active Gardevoir and Sylveon. Leading the charge, Andrew also using Ultra Space, taking a turn to just look through his deck and see if there's anything that uh, that is missing. Also, just make sure that he's got an idea of what he might have prized. And then we'll see if Andrew Barlow is just going to use another fairy song if he puts down another pokemon gx he gives jesse the potential to win the game with two gusts and i don't think he's going to want to do that he plays cynthia and caitlin discarding a lightning charm and getting green's exploration back from the discard pile this puts jesse on the clock because with tag switch in his hand it's really just a matter of time before this Dragon Charm Gardevoir is able to gust up and KO the Reshi Ram on the bench. Looks like Andrew's actually going to switch into his new Gardevoir and Sylveon and maybe just start swinging away with that. Does make me a little bit nervous. This board position makes me very nervous. Andrew Barlow could have just tag switched onto the Guardi Sylveon with the Dragon Charm. You know, I guess he does leave himself a 2-2. But, like, putting the Gardevoir and Sylveon 
without the guard without the dragon charm in the active makes me a little bit nervous because I think Jesse might be able to capitalize on this and take three prizes. And if it's Blacephalon GX is prized, then he'll have an opportunity to snag that off his prizes. But then like I said, I mean he might not play it. And he might be looking at potentially having to attack with Naganadels to try and take out that Dragon Charmed Gardevoir. And uh, I can assure you that the Naganadels will not get there against this Gardevoir and Sylveon deck. There is just so much healing in the deck. You see, Jesse actually has a red and blue as well as a Mallow and Lana is using Tag Call. He's going to get red and blue out of the deck. That is an interesting inclusion. He can evolve into Naganadel GX. And it looks like he's going for the red and blue this turn. Discarding Ultra Space. I think he can probably discard an Energy too. So he's going to have plenty Ultra Space and Reset Stamp. He actually needs the Energy to retreat his to Denny. He's going to have plenty of energy to knock out this Gardevoir and Sylveon with the red and blue energy acceleration going on to that Naganadel GX. That is wild. I've not seen that combination yet. Pretty cool. And then he's going to use Pokemon Communication Trading. Reshiram and Zekrom back into the deck. Now what hurts is that Jesse knows that this Reshiram and Zekrom is going down. There's no stopping it. That Guard of War and Sylveon over there on the bench with the Dragon Charm, that's going to knock him out. It's going to deal 300 damage with weakness. And I don't think that there's anything in Jesse's deck that could stop it. We are going to see a day day change, though, discarding an energy. And Jesse, I was going to say, wow, Jesse actually um, not attaching the energy to the active, saying, you know what, heart of the cards, I'll draw an energy to retreat my Dedenne. If he didn't, uh, that Dedenne would have been stuck. Jesse does find the energy can retreat, and he can charge that up, too, to his other Naganado, which is great. Thank you, Stonewall, for those bits. Natalie and Excella Sun, thank you guys for those bits earlier as well. Appreciate it. Jesse going in with the Fable Flare Bolts, taking three prizes. And I do not see a Blacephalon GX in the prizes, so I'm thinking that he doesn't run it. How can Jesse come back from this board state? I mean, I suppose taking three prizes, it means that Jesse is going to get one attack for 190 with turning point. And then he has to hope that Andrew Barlow does not heal and then go in with his Naganade LGX for game. I think that's the only way Jesse could theoretically win the game. He has to hit for 190 with the Beast and then snipe 170, hoping that Barlow doesn't heal too much. It's a tough spot to be in. Also, weirdly, Andrew Barlow cannot safely bench another Pokemon. Um, if Andrew Barlow benches another Gardevoir and Sylveon, or if Andrew Barlow benches another Megalopunny or something like that, then that's a liability, and Jesse could gust that up and win the game with it. But then Andrew Barlow's primary form of healing is also going to be Mallow and Lana. So in order to utilize Mallow and Lana, he is going to have to bench something else. So we'll see what Andrew Barlow does. He doesn't bench another Pokemon GX. I think that's a heads-up play at this point. And Jesse, 
I think top deck to stadium, which is big. So he gets to play out of this power plant lock that he's in. Can use ultra conversion. He's got the double charge up. He's got an energy switch, I think, in his hand too. So he does have a confirmed attack with Naganadel from Lost Thunder. Turning point for 190. That is a big turning point. He's trying to decide how to do this. He's going to energy switch off the Naganade LGX. Very compromising situation. He might not have the Viridian that I thought he had. Jesse looks like he's kind of approaching his end turn step here. And just going to have to turning point for 190. Hate to see it. I mean, Jesse with no other way to advance his board state has to hit for 190 and literally hope Andrew Barlow does no healing whatsoever. He could potentially turning point with his other Naganadel next turn. For 80 and 190 plus 80 will get him there. But this is uh this is really rough. Is that a second dragon charm? No way. Andrew Barlow putting another Gardevoir and Sylveon down. I believe that is a second charm. That's so bad for Jesse. That's got to be game, set, and match. Two Dragon Charms. Jesse plays no Blacephalon GX in the deck. I really like a Blacephalon GX in Reshiram. Just giving you another out against things like this. Andrew Barlow going to use... Tag switch, putting his energy onto the bench guard of Warren Sylvia. But I wonder if he's got a heal card. Does he have the Mallow Alana? Ooh, he does. This is the nail in the coffin for this matchup. This is it, folks. The Mallow and Alana healing 120 damage and switching. That is so bad for Jesse. And now with two Dragon Charms out... Andrew Barlow is going to be able to walk this matchup right on in. Jesse has got nothing. Andrew Barlow has got to have that ghost in his hand. I saw at least one custom catcher in his hand to bring up the Dedenny for game. He's only got two prizes remaining. And Jesse... Looking through his hand, wondering if he's got any outs. He's going to play a Shrine of Punishment. Shrine of Punishment into Dedenny. Dedenny's going to die. Is it not? The Dedenny is at 150 damage. That Dedenny is going to die. That's going to be game. Uh, I think Jesse just uh, might have shot himself in the foot. Unless he's got some way to heal this to Denny that I don't know about. He could tingly return. The busted tingly return, chat. Does he have it? He's got to go for it, I guess. He's going to switch in Mallow and Lana. Oh my gosh. So I guess this is the only play Jesse has. Switch into Dedenne, Mallow and Lana away to energy. At what cost, though? Anything he sends up is game over. He's got to send up the Naganadel. He's stuck. Je Andrew Barlow still has not used his GX yet, and Jesse realizes it, and that is game. Andrew Barlow taking the win with his Gardevoir and Sylveon deck with two Dragon Charms. Andrew Barlow taking no L's tonight to no Dragon decks, that is for sure. Andrew Barlow with the win, the second Dragon Charm, and Jesse had no answer to it. 
Tell you what, that Gardevoir and Sylveon deck will probably be pretty favored against decks like Arceus, Dagopalkia, and Reshiram if you're expecting those to be big. Gardevoir, Sylveon with Dragon Charm does have the answers to these Dragon decks. So that was pretty cool, and we'll get Andrew Barlow back here to talk about his Gardevoir and Sylveon list in just a moment. We'll be right back. Yo, we got Andrew Barlow. Just won round two of the Full Group Games League tournament. How you doing, Andrew? Good. Awesome stuff. And uh, we were joking before, you know, I asked you what you were playing before the event. <laughs> you were like, some deck. And then show up <laughs> with Guardy Sylveon with two Dragon Charms. Yes. Why the two Dragon Charms tonight? Because I felt like there was going to be a lot of ADP because there was a big hype and yeah. a little bit of Reshiram, which there was. Yeah. What did you play against round one? I got the lucky round one by. Oh, well, okay. So, you know, 2 0. A buy, and you played against Reshiram. We actually had Reshiram on stream round mm -hmm. one, too, so it was a good choice, I'd say, for tonight. So what are your thoughts on Gardevoir and Sylveon in this format? Do you think it's a top contender? It definitely is because it just the charms give you so many favorable matchups, and just being able to play Power Plant is huge. And the addition of Megalopony and Jigglypuff lets you get those one-shots you were struggling to get before. I agree, and I think uh, it also really uses Mallow and Lana very yes. well. Mallow and uh, Lana, Tag Call, Cynthia and Caitlyn, all those cards like really help out the deck. For sure. And uh, I think, uh, what, are your, uh, what are your outs for Keldeo? I mean, we saw that uh, ADP decks are playing a lot of Chaotic Swells yep. uh, to go with their Keldeos, yep. and I saw I think you're running a Faba, right? Yep, there's one Faba in the deck to guarantee so I can get the Power Plant down. Right, for sure. You remove the Chaotic yeah. Swell and get that knockout on the mm -hmm. Caldeo that one turn. So, great stuff, Andrew. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw uh, that you, you know, I was thinking that you would probably play Malamar. I know you liked Malamar a lot last mm -hmm. format. What are your thoughts on Malamar this format? It's a deck that, like, didn't get as much as you th thought it did. Because mm -hmm. while Blacephalon and Mimikyu are all good, they're not good enough. Because the Malamalana is just really good against the deck. It is. Because it was like, yeah. you, oh, you just did 10 damage to me. It's like, sure, I'll take your 40 spell tag. That feels bad, right? Yes. Yes. And Malo and Lana being, uh, some decks on PTCGO are running like, I, I swear, like three of that card. Yes. They're running like, and then Cynthia and Caitlin for it back, and it's just like, you're up against this brick wall. So mm -hmm. I think while Malamar got a lot, every other deck got Malo and Lana. So yes. it's, uh, it is in a little bit of a rougher spot than we might have thought previously. Mm -hmm. Lux and stuff. Andrew, thanks for the insight, and good luck in the rest of your rounds. Thank you. Getting ready for round three of the Full Group Games League tournament. Last round went to time, so sorry about the delay between rounds, but we've got more exciting Pokemon trading card game action coming right at you. Look at Brady playing in his Ultra Ball sleeves there, Brady. Looking, looking slick, looking fresh, Brady Bodner. We got Brady Bodner on the left playing Baby Blacephalon. Pidgeotto, or Blagephalon, as it is uh, so endearingly called. Uh, we had uh, this guy Jeff, Jeff Cross, I believe, or Chris, Jeff Chris. Jeff Chris finished in the top 16 of the Knoxville Regional Championships with this Blacephalon Pidgeotto deck that he'd been brewing up. So Blagephalon is the, uh, the name that has been uh, dubbed. Blacephalon Pidgeotto, very cool deck, and uh, doing well here at the Full Grip League Tournament tonight with two Blacephalon players at 2-0. We've also got Dave Cook, who is facing off against Malamar, and uh, he said he beat Malamar last round, so he's feeling pretty confident about that, even though I think that's kind of a shaky matchup. Matt Price is going to be giving us Charizard and Brakeson Tag Team GX this round, and... Matt was telling me before the round started that he was not confident in his deck's ability to beat Brady. Um, I think that Charizard Brakeson does have some things going for it. It's got Reset Stamp, which is very good. It's got uh, 270 HP and some healing cards in it, which is very good. But, you know, it's also got some things that are very bad for it. The Volcanion in Matt's deck only does 110 damage. Blacephalon has 120 hit points. That's bad. Um, you know, Matt does start with his Volcanion. He is going second, so maybe he'll get to pull off a big 
uh, you know, big acceleration with Volcanion, but I actually just see Welder and a bunch of fires in his hand, so he's probably going to be going in and attacking with his Volcanion on turn one and hoping that Brady does not have a response. Brady starting with the Jirachi. Ideal start here for Brady. That's uh, exactly where he wants to be, and he's got the Ultra Space in hand to get a Blacephalon out of the deck and slap that onto his bench. So that's good. And then it's looking like he might just go in with a Stellar Wish first. Looking at the top five cards of his deck and choosing a trainer card he finds there to put into his hand. And it looks like he fails it. So no grabs there off of the Stellar Wish. But he does have a Blacephalon to put on the bench at the very least. And judging by Matt's hand, this could get uh, kind of sketchy quickly. I think Matt would ideally want to be loading up a Charizard and breaks in and then try to just pinpoint down Brady's attackers very quickly. And Brady actually has a hand full of attackers. He's got turn one welder as well, just for one, but still good. Just getting some energy down onto the Blacephalon. It looks like he's got an energy to attach as well as a fiery flint in his hand, and then he's gonna pass. We'll see what Matt gets. He's got a mega low punny. That is not going to be very useful in this matchup as Brady's deck plays no tag team Pokemon. Literally zero GXs actually. He plays no GXs. So the uh yeah, the Mega Low Punny not really doing a whole lot. Matt can take a look at the deck with Ultra Space if he wants to, but he doesn't play any Ultra Beast Pokemon, so uh, he may not opt to do that. And you might just have to welder onto this Volcanion. You can get the turn one knockout, but Brady has the cards to get a return knockout with this Blacephalon in his hand. So that could get a little bit sketchy if he if he does. I think uh, maybe an ideal turn one for Matt is to vote, you know, welder onto the Volcanion and then find a Charizard breaks in and manually attach to it once. It looks like, oh, no, he didn't. Is this Mega Low Punny Jigglypuff about to get some welder? Do not do that, Matt. Oh, well, here it goes. Okay. So, Mega Low Punny getting some welder action there. And uh, Matt does not find a way to get a Charizard breaks in um, into play. And it looks like. He might be accelerating some energy onto the low puff. And hey, the low puff has got a really good GX attack. Just saying, at this point, Matt can accelerate three energy from the deck onto the low puff. And we could see a pretty saucy play where Matt gusts up a Blacephalon with no energy and snipes the one with the energy. I think that's, you know, maybe we get to see that. Puffy Smashers GX, right? Where I think that's what we're going to see. We're going to see a Puffy Smashers GX for sure. And that could be effective. I think if Matt is able to gust up Brady's Blacephalon without energy on it, and GX the one with the energy on it, that could be his best chance of survival. Now, Matt does have a Green's Exploration in his hand, so he does have the option to, you know, move some of this energy to a safe location. And we got Kevin in the chat saying, this has to be the first televised full effect Puffy Smashers. <laughs> I would uh I would probably agree with that. Yes, for sure. At least in paper cards, absolutely. Uh I think it is probably the first paper cards Puffy Smashers GX that uh has ever been te televised. I feel pretty confident in that. Brady going in with Stellar Wish. And I mean, the dream would be for Brady to like gust up the Mega Low Bunny and knock it out, but I don't think that that's going to be in the cards. Really, I think Brady would be happy to just set up some Pidgeys and get himself in a situation where his board position is safe from reset stamp, and that's part of what makes this Pidgeotto version of Blacephalon 
so strong is that it becomes reset stamp proof because it sets up these Pidgeotto's which can airmail and dig itself out of the hole that it, uh, you know decks can find themselves in after a reset stamp in it. And it is impervious to power plant, which is very neat because the Pidgeotto does not get turned off by power plant. So very strong combo there. And it looks like Brady is gonna pass Potentially walking into the Puffy Smashers play. Let's see it, Matt Price. Show me, show me the Puffy Smasher play. Matt top decks a tag call, so Rush, you know, Charizard and Breaks in coming in. Maybe a little late, but uh, we'll, you know, be making a debut here, which is good. And Matt grabbing a. Cynthia and Caitlin, as well as the Charizard and Brixen. I think Matt can greens for the custom catcher and a switch, and he would have it. And I would love to see that. I hope he does it. Please, Matt. You've got this mega. Don't go for tag switch. Don't go the soft way out. Tag switch onto Charizard Brixen. I'm looking for. I'm looking for Puffy Smashers. I mean, if we're going to lose this game, we're going to lose this game in style. For sure. So if I'm mad, I think he just greens for the Switch, the Custom Catcher. You bring up the non-energy Blacephalon, and you just womp on the other one with Puffy Smashers GX, and you hope that the Blacephalon stays asleep, I think. It, like, puts it to sleep or something, right? Because the Blacephalon deck does not play a lot of switches. That's the thing about the Blacephalon deck. There's almost no switches in that deck. So, like, it just plays boards. So if you can take out two of the Blacephalons without them really getting to do any damage, that could be huge. I mean, that could be all the swing that Matt needs in order to start to pull ahead in this matchup and i do see a costume catcher there at the bottom of his deck he's definitely thinking about it come on matt please do it for the fans matt do it for the people and it looks like he's grabbing a tag call and a custom catcher i don't see a switch but i do like the grab of the tag of the costume catcher, so maybe he's still gonna do it. I hope he's gonna do it. He could, I guess, manually retreat the Volcanion. Looks like he's going back in with tag call. And just thinning out cards from the deck. Tag call just so powerful of a card. He's getting the Mallow and Lana as well as the Cynthia and Caitlin. And we'll see if he just puts all his chips on this Puffy Smashers GX. I hope so. I think it needs to happen this turn. But I'm not sure if he's got it this turn. I think... I mean, he could retreat. That's his only option to get it, is to manually retreat the Volcanion. That or he's just knocking out... I think he could just knock out the Jirachi. And this is a safe play, too. Knock out the Jirachi. And then I think he's preparing for the Custom Catcher uh, Puffy Smasher's next turn. And that would be that would be a pretty good play. That or he's retreating. Matt really taking his time to think through this one. I mean, he does need to keep his pace... Of Play up. Uh, I do see, you know, 30 minutes is not forever. And there's no table judge here. And Matt is well taking over his, uh, his allotted time. And he's just going to use the Volcanion, knock out the Jirachi, and reset stamp Brady to six. And I think he suspects that maybe there's some good cards in Brady's hand, so at least a Pidgeotto. He's going to stamp him to six and hope that he doesn't really have too much. The Jirachi is going to hit the discard pile. 
Brady taking the knockout with Volcanion. And the ball is going to be back in Brady's court. And the Blocephalon is coming out to play. And I am going to be so crushed if that Megaloputty and Jigglypuff gets knocked out this next turn. Because uh, I need to see a Puffy Smashers. For sure. And Matt has it built up for next turn. I mean... Looks like Brady is just going to Elms. He's going to go get himself three Pidgeotos out of the deck. Yo, the real Clark Kent. That love is mutual, bro. Thanks. It looks like Brady is, he is all ready to go. I mean, these uh, these Elms are just such a powerful, powerful draw out for this Blacephalon deck. And Brady could very easily use airmail and find the gust effect that he needs to bring up the Megalopony as well as the energy that he needs. Valero gifting a sub to the real Clark Kent. Uh, wow, Valero, thank you for the gift. Appreciate it. It looks like Brady's going to take a knockout on that Volcanion. What can Matt do? With all these Pidgeotos in play, this is disastrous. Matt's going to use Pokegear, finds himself a Greens Exploration. He's got the Mega Low Pony active. He kind of needs to gust up the Blocephalon without any energy on it and snipe the one with the energy on it. He's going to use another Pokegear. Just thinning out all his options from his deck. Finds another greens exploration. He's got all the greens he could possibly want in his hand. Ah, he's got his whole deck at his disposal now. Megalopony is not the GX Pokemon we wanted, but it's the GX Pokemon we got. And as I'm looking at this card, I'm just now realizing that they have a disco ball in the background. Did I? Did anybody else notice the? the detail on this Megalopony and Jigglypuff card, that there is a disco ball back there. And like disco light colors in the background. Did anybody else notice that? I am just now noticing it. I never really took a look, but that's for sure a disco ball. They got disco fever. That's amazing. Wow, look at that. Very cool. I agree, Natalie. They are having a good time. They're just dancing. That's nice. Matt, considering his play, he's got the double custom catcher in hand. Which supporter will he use? I think the ideal scenario is that Matt would welder onto a Charizard and breaks in while simultaneously gusting up the non-energy Blacephalon. I don't think he's got the welder, though. So at the very least, he needs to attach an energy to a Charizard and breaks in. That has to happen. So I think if you have to greens to make that happen, you have to get an energy on Charizard and breaks in so that you can stream an attack. So Matt realizes this. He goes for the greens exploration. He's got to get an energy to put onto his Charizard and breaks in so that he can potentially welder to it next turn and formulate another attacker. That's the only chance he's got. Hey, thanks for the kind words, Valero, in the chat. Really appreciate that. It means a lot. And yes, big shout out to the mods and all the work they do. Uh, just as far as, uh, you know, moderating the chat and guiding the community. I really do have uh, the best mods in the game. And the best friends in the, gra in the game, honestly. Because that's who the mods... The mods are just my friends. That's it. Really. It's just our friend group, so... Very, very thankful for the uh, 
for the friendships I have in this game. And for you guys, the viewers. Wouldn't be anything without you guys here, so appreciate it. Matt's going to grab Welder and Fiery Flint off the screen's exploration. Taking his time to shuffle, but I bet he's going in with that Fiery Flint, so he probably shouldn't shuffle too long. I do think that was the correct play for Matt. He needs to go get those Fire Energy out of his deck and at least attach one to a Charizard and Brakeson. And then he's got the Welder he needs for next turn. Having a tough time with this Fiery Flint. Fiery Flint is like the worst card to have to play. Discarding two cards. Never, ever want to discard two cards. He's letting that Mallow and Lana go, though. And I think that's fair. Let's be honest. Brady ain't going to hit you for anything less than a knockout, Matt. That's uh, for sure. So the Mallow and Lana hitting the discard pile. Brady's got the Charizard and breaks in and a Fire Energy making its way onto it. I like that play. Building up second attacker. Now is the time, Matt. Let's see the gust. Bring up the Energyless Placephalon or Pidgeotto. That's fine. I actually like the Energyless Placephalon better, but Pidgeotto is cool. And then we're going to put it to sleep. Oh, what's happening? Oh, what? Oh, I really don't like this play. Matt just knocked it out with Jumping Balloon. No! Matt, no! Puffy Smashers GX, Matt. Oh, the, <laughs> the Megalopunny's gonna, gonna die. Matt, oh, no. Did you think he couldn't do it? Oh, gosh, Chad. I wanted to see a Puffy Smashers. Oh, jeez, chat. <laughs> this, is, this is real bad. <laughs> real bad. Oh, no. Oh, I can't even hide my lack of excitement. He's got five energy on him. Why not, Puffy Smashers GX? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm so sad, chat. I really wanted to see the Puffy Smasher GX, but that's okay. You know what? We are mere spectators. It's their world. We're just watching it unfold. Brady is for sure going to punish this line of play from Matt. He has got all the sauce in the world. Five energy. Megalopony, biting the dust, Charizard and Brakeson coming to the active. So I think, yes, Matt's has got one thing on his mind. He wanted to take out the Pidgey. I think Matt would have even been better. Like, why not, at the very least, why not gust out a Pidgey and GX the other Pidgey? Like, if you want, if you're intent on taking out a Pidgey, then gust up a Pidgey, take out another Pidgey, you know? That way you leave a Pidgey active and make it a little bit harder for Brady to maneuver. But yeah, either way, it's it's all good. Because I don't think Matt's going to end up using another GX attack. I don't think so. Maybe he ends up using Charizard and Breaks since GX attack. It's possible. Charizard and Breaks since GX attack is pretty good. Crimson Flame Pillar, and I think it also burned and confused. Yeah, it can burn and confuse, I guess. And Matt does have the Reset Stamp, so I'm imagining he's going to want to try and Reset Stamp Brady to two, and then start stacking his hand with Charizard and Breaks. And this is the Shake and Bake play Matt needs. Did he not Reset Stamp? What? Why didn't he reset stamp? He's got a reset stamp in his head. No, Matt, no. Brady for sure has game, bro. Why did we not reset stamp, Brady? Oh, Matt. He didn't have the stamp? Oh, he was using Poke Gear. Thanks, Zeely. I didn't see that. He did not have the stamp, chat. It's my bad. My bad. He saw the stamp off Poke. I saw the stamp in his hand and just assumed he had it. 
Oh, well, there's nothing he could do about that. There is no stamp. I thought he had the stamp. Jeremy, yes, the birds list is kind of stamp proof, but to make Brady have a welder, two fire, and then six more fire off of a stamp to two with only two Pidgeotos out is a big deal, right? I mean, there is a, there's a lot to ask out of that hand, you know, especially when you're only going to see five cards. That is, uh, you know, that's still a lot to ask out of a five card, you know, out of five cards. So you still have to stamp if you can. But Matt did not have the stamp available to him. He had to welder that turn in order to attack. He had to welder in order to attack. So Matt couldn't greens and welder in the same turn. So he had to welder and hope he hit the stamp off the welder and he did not which is unfortunate and it looks like Brady is gearing up for game here I think he's probably got it all he's got almost his whole deck in his hand at this point folks I mean he he just he just has it yep he is going to get the fire energy back and Matt Price knows what the deal is yeah that's uh that's gonna be game folks Brady doing the most amount of damage Fireball Circus, and that is a wrap. Matt Price doing everything he could to try and reel that game in, but Blacephalon's Fireball Circus just ramping up damage way too quickly for that tag team based deck. Matt Price going to drop to 2 and 1. Brady Botner moving on to 3 0 with Blacephalon at the Full Grip League Tournament. Exciting game there. We got to see Blacephalon Pidgeotto really putting in some work. I'm excited to see how the other Blacephalon Pidgeotto deck did in the Swiss round. We're going to get Brady Botner back here for an interview to talk about his choice to play Baby Blacephalon and what he thinks about the deck moving forward. We'll be right back. What's up? We got Brady here. He just won his third round. You're 3-0. Yes. So what have you played against so far with the Blacephalon deck, Ready? I played against uh, Matt with the Reshazard, and then I played against Picarom, and I played against a, another Reshazard deck. Would you say that those were like free matchups? Uh, yeah, free. Free <laughs> matchups! <laughs> All right, so that's awesome. Yeah. Why'd you choose to play Baby Blacephalon, and how do you think the deck uh, fits into this metagame right now? Um, I think if you just don't play against Malamar, it's like the best deck. Right. Yeah. Uh, but you literally just cannot beat Malamar, which is, you know, a real shame, but, uh... It is a shame. It beats everything else. I, I don't like. think that there's <laughs> any polishing that matchup. No. It's just yeah. a nightmare, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You only have so many Blacephalons. Right. You take way more to knock out them than they take to knock Correct. out you. Yeah. Uh, you have to keep finding welders. Yeah. They don't. Right. Uh, yeah, it's and just... you don't get spell tags. They do. <laughs> yeah. And they can, you know, just mess around and snipe 12 if they want to, knock out two Pidgeotos. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So it's just uh, that's a nightmare of a matchup, sure. but if you dodge all those Malamars, uh, you're pretty much in the clear. Yep. So that's awesome. Did you do anything to Jeff Chris's top sixteen list from Knoxville, or uh, uh, put yeah. any Cosmic Eclipse cards in it? Yeah. So it's uh, it had four custom catchers, and it's two great catchers now. And then I added uh, fourth Jirachi and one Fire Energy. It's like what Azul did to the list, but I, instead of the Beast, I'm playing just an extra player. Okay. I don't really like the Beast in. I don't really think you need that. No. no. Yeah, I yeah. just would rather be able to get it back from the discard, I think. Right. Yeah. But uh, that's cool. So the Great Catcher, an awesome addition to this already consistent deck. The For fourth sure. Jirachi is great as well. And there's really, like, no switch cards in the deck, right? It's, it's just, just two escape boards. Two boards, yeah. right. Which I think that that's, like, a really cool way to play the Jirachi engine. You don't necessarily need to play the switches. If you're a slower Jirachi deck, you just wait till it gets knocked out. Yeah, I mean, with this deck especially, like, you can just... Sit behind your Jirachi until he's gone. And <laughs> All day, yeah. Uh, just you accumulate just... a hand with Pidgeotto. And... Exactly. And we saw you did uh, just that in your game yeah. versus Matt. <laughs> Huge hand. Uh, were you worried at all about Matt uh, using his Puffy Smashers GX on you? Uh, I was not. <laughs> you were not. I, I was really rooting for the Puffy Smashers uh -huh. GX play. I On the turn where he gusted up and KO'd your Pidgeotto, I wanted him to bring up your Blacephalon with no energy 
and Puffy Smasher is the one with the energy. <laughs> I thought that play would have been real nice. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, you know, we, we can only we can only wish. All right. Anyways, congrats, Brady, yeah, and good luck you. in your next round. Right? Thanks. Yep. Players are getting set up for the fourth round of the Full Grip Games League tournament. We've got Andrew Barlow on the left versus Cody Gray on the right. Both players 3-0 undefeated, looking to uh, advance undefeated into the final round. This will be a five-round tournament. So we've got two rounds left, 17 Masters players for our league tournament tonight. Andrew Barlow rocking that Gardevoir and Sylveon tag team GX deck and Cody Gray has got Malamar apparently Cody Gray did play against the other Blacephalon Pidgeotto deck in the, in the room this past round and he made some very swift work of that deck my buddy Dave said he opened two Pidgeys and passed and Cody set up three Malamars on turn two and the game was swiftly over now this matchup should be pretty interesting. I mean, Andrew and Bar Andrew Barlow has got Mallow and Lana in his Guardian Sylveon deck, as well as Xerneas GX. So a lot of uh, a lot of stuff for Cody to have to work against here. A lot of healing in the deck with multiple copies of Mallow and Lana, and of course Xerneas GX's GX attack. Now. Cody does have the Lunala Prism Star in his list, which could be useful and deal out some big damage, hopefully, if uh, if Andrew Barlow gets a lot of energy into play that Lunala Prism Star can certainly add up. And we'll see if Cody can just get off to an aggressive start. Apparently he's been getting three Malamar in play turn two, like every game, so... If he can just keep that up, he should be a-okay, putting some pressure on to Guardian and Sylveon. Uh, Guardian and Sylveon doesn't really love a ton of pressure like that when it is setting up, since uh, a lot of the lists are not even playing like uh, a ton of great potions anymore. So we'll see if maybe Andrew still has the great potions in his deck, or if he's just planning on using Xerneas GX and... Mal and Lana to do his healing. I mean, it's certainly a lot uh, of healing with those cards, and I'm wondering with all of these various uh, fairy charms that he's got, as well as the custom catchers, you know, a cut had to be made somewhere. So I'm thinking that potentially the great potions might be what ended up getting cut from Andrew Barlow's list uh, in order to make room for all this other action that we got going on. Cody is going to get two mulligan draws because Andrew Barlow was not able to open a basic Pokemon in those first two hands that he drew out. But he's got a couple of basics in this hand. He's got the Xerneas GX as well as a Gardevoir and Sylveon. Cody's going to take his mulligans, and these players are getting started. Round four of the league tournament getting underway now. Andrew Barlow on the draw, starting with his Gardevoir and Sylveon, suiting it up with an energy. He's got a Chaotic Swell, very disruptive stadium card from Cosmic Eclipse. Could slow Cody down by making it so that he cannot get his Viridian Forests into play. But other than that, it looks like Andrew Barlow's hand is dead. I don't see a supporter card in his hand. This could be free reign for Cody to get off to an explosive start, and that's it. We might have to see Andrew Barlow accelerate onto his Xerneas GX. That's certainly not the ideal Pokemon to accelerate energy onto early in the game. But Cody's hand is looking really strange as well. I see multiple Malamars, multiple energies, and I'm not sure that I see a supporter card in that hand. So we might just be living on a stellar wish on Cody's side of the field. He's going to use Pokemon Communication. Get a Inke for the bench. And then I imagine... 
going in with Stellar Wish unless there is a supporter card in that hand I did not see. Bodhi shuffling up now. And we'll see. I mean, ideally, I think hoping for a Cynthia so that he can just refresh this hand. He's got an escape board, which is nice. And that will clearly go on to the Jirachi. But we're going to see a Stellar Wish. I don't think there's a draw supporter available to him right now. So a draw supporter would be big. He finds the Cynthia. That's perfect for Cody. Exactly what he wants to see. The skateboard's going to fly down onto that Jirachi. Right? I mean, that's probably what we want to see. Yes? Very good. And the Psychic Energy onto the Giratina. And a Spell Tag. Another skateboard on an Inke. Cynthia. So, no psychic attachment to the Giratina. I don't know why we wouldn't just attach to the Giratina while it's here. I understand wanting to get psychic energies into the discard pile, but I think that probably just attach that psychic. Uh, mathematically, I think that probably increases your odds of getting a turn two attack with the Tina there. But, hey, I'm not the one who's had three Malamars in play turn two, uh, you know, both games in the tournament so far. So we'll, uh, we'll see what he gets. All right, six energy off of the Cynthia, or six cards off the Cynthia. We'll see what he is working with. He's got a Ditto Prism Star. That's excellent. But without an energy, I'm feeling, I'm feeling that uh, Cody is definitely getting punished for not attaching that Psychic from his hand, unless there's, like, some reason that I missed. I think he just most definitely should have slung that down onto the Giratina. And it's probably going to be a big pass from Cody. And the ball is in Barlow's court. It looks like he got a Mallow and Lana off the top. So not the supporter you want to see, but he'll take it. It does buy him some time. And he'll use Guardi and Sylveon's Fairy Song. And the good thing about Fairy Song is that it does actually thin Andrew Barlow's deck. So every time he uses Fairy Song, he does increase the odds of him seeing a good card off the top since he's taking all these energies that are not draw cards out of the deck. So that's good. Cody looks like uh, Starachi will wake up. And the ball's going to be back in his court. I would be very impressed if Cody is able to negotiate a shadow impact this turn. I think he would be in a much better situation if he had an energy drop. But he doesn't even have a supporter in his hand. So that's going to be a big ask this turn. And without being able to use Viridian, I think it's even more essential uh, that Cody... You know, get all those manual attachments in when he sees the energy. He's going to go in with Stellar Wish. I mean, really, the only out he could have is a Cynthia, but he already cynthia off the Stellar Wish last turn, so the odds of him finding another one are dwindling, but there it is. All right. And he's just going to play it, leaving the bench open. I doubt we're going to be seeing a turn two attack from Cody, but... Even if Cody could just find an energy to put onto his Giratina or an energy to put into the discard pile, I'd be pretty pleased with that. But with the Chaotic Swell, that Swell is going to be a huge hindrance to Cody because, you know, typically Cody would just be able to find a Viridian and a Psychic Energy, and then there he goes and is able to get an energy into the discard pile, an energy out of the deck, and everything is smooth. But the Swell is stopping that function of the deck. You might have to rely on Acro Bike to try and get Psychic Energy into the discard pile. We see him uh, messing around, trying to choose between Espeon, Deoxys, and Viridian. He keeps the Viridian, but he can't play it, uh, which is very sad. And he might just be kind of realizing that now. And he's choosing a Pokemon Communication. He's got two Psychic Energy in his hand. The Viridian gets sacked by the Swell. I mean, to be fair, there are only so many Swells in Andrew Barlow's deck, so 
getting rid of the swell is a big deal because maybe he will be able to get into a Viridian later in the game. And it looks like at this point, Cody is happy to just throw up the Giratina with the Psychic Energy on it and say, all right, pass, it's cool. If you take a knockout on my Giratina, uh, it's all well and good. Andrew Barlow, top decks, the Greens Exploration, and I'm sure he is stoked about that, finally getting to handpick some cards out of the deck, get himself another Gardevoir and Sylveon. And at this point, I think Andrew Barlow's board position is going to be established, and he should be ready to roll. He looks like he's getting Energy Spinner and Tag Call. He's probably going to use both of them. Energy Spinner is going to net him a Fairy Energy that he can attach to his active Gardevoir and Sylveon. Tag Call is just going to get him Kate, Cynthia and Caitlyn as well as probably another Gardevoir and Sylveon. And he can start moving his energy around how he wants it. He doesn't mind having the Xerneas on the bench. It's fine. It's not really under any big threat from Cody, especially with Cody only having one Malamar in play. He's not going to be powering up any sort of Lunala Prism Star play or anything like that out of the blue. There's not going to be any surprise, you know, Lunala, what is it, uh, Solgaleo and Lunala GX or something like that. He's, we're not going to see anything like that. Coming out of Cody's side of the field, he is largely relying on Giratina, Blacephalon, you know, the low hitting non GX Pokemon in this Malamar list. And it looks like Barlow is just going to use that Kaleidostorm attack to take the knockout on Giratina, moving the energy around. And Cody is actually going to put all four damage counters onto Xerneas, and I don't mind that play at all. It's actually going to be much more difficult for uh, Andrew Barlow to heal the Xerneas than it is for him to heal the active. With Mallow and Lana... It's actually, uh, you know, very easy to heal the active, much more difficult to heal the bench. So I do kind of like that play, putting the damage on the Xerneas. Even though the Xerneas uh, will never matter in the prize exchange, uh, he knows that the Xerneas is a major player in Barlow's strategy to win. I mean, without that GX attack, Andrew Barlow is going to have, like, struggled to heal. So I think it's a valid play. Uh, with the Xerneas there, any damage Cody puts on to the Gardevoir and Sylveons, Andrew Barlow is just a tag call or a tag switch out of, uh, out of all that damage. Cody's got a much more stable setup now with two Malamars in play. And energy on his Giratina. Still, I think, struggling to get Psychic Energy into the discard pile. He does Viridian 1 away. If he's got a treasure in hand, he can get the second one into the discard pile this turn, which would be great. And... I don't see a way to discard that other energy. This would be really tough if Cody misses another attack. He's got to get some pressure on. And he does find a mysterious treasure, grabs it immediately. He knows exactly what he wants. He's going to discard that psychic energy with the mysterious... Whoa. Never mind. He must have two energy in the discard pile now. Never mind. I thought there was only one in the discard pile, but it must be two. It's going to Mysterious Treasure away. Lily. Keep the Psychic in his hand. And then he must have Double Psychic Recharge onto the Giratina. He does. I forgot that the Giratina had sacked an energy to the turn previous. And finally, we're going to get to see a Shadow Impact. From Cody. 130 damage onto the Gardevoir and Sylveon GX. 50 damage on that Xerneas. Another huge card uh, that could potentially be in Cody's arsenal would be the um, would be the Latios GX. 
with Tag Purge. Tag Purge completely walls off this Gardevoir and Sylveon deck, but I'm not sure that Cody plays Latios GX. And we see that Andrew Barlow just has the Mallow and Lana in hand, you know. Absolutely thrilled about that. Glancing off that hit completely. And we get to see how easy it is for Gardevoir and Sylveon to just take these hits on the chin and just keep dishing out attacks. Giratina from Lost Thunder, Shadow Impact, just not doing nearly as much work as it used to in formats past because Shadow Impact just gets erased by plays like that with Mallow and Lana. Uh, and it's so devastating to be playing a deck like Malawar and just to get your attack, Mallow and Lana, it's like erasing your whole attack. And we see Andrew Barlow moving an energy onto the Xerneas. This could be the turn if Cody is able to get out the Esper. Uh, he can ping the Xerneas to 60, and he can Esper it for knockout. But at that point, Barlow will only have three prizes remaining. And I don't think that Cody will be able to win the game if he wastes this attack on Xerneas. That being said, I don't think Cody can win the game if he doesn't knock out Xerneas. Uh, I think the only way he wins is if he knocks out Xerneas and then starts attacking with Latios GX. But I don't think he's got a Latios GX in his list. We could see how valuable a potential Latios GX would be. However, though, if he did play one. It looks like Cody is not really uh, worried about going in with Esper. I think he's just planning on attacking with Giratina again. And he's got the little Blacephalon as well. He's going to bench that. Blacephalon would be clutch on the three prize turn, which Cody is anticipating will come up next turn. But if Barlow is able to pull off the GX attack this next turn, at, you know, healing off all this damage from his board, it's going to be pure devastation for Cody. Dealing with all that damage clear, with Andrew only having three prizes left to take, I don't think Cody will be able to navigate his way out of that one if Barlow pulls off that GX attack. But there's still hope. Might not have it. I think I see a Cynthia and Caitlin in Andrew Barlow's hand, so he might not have the cards. Well, I guess he does, guaranteed, because he could just retreat and Viridian. So yeah, Andrew Barlow has the guaranteed GX if he retreats his active guard award, Sylvia. Now, he might not want to retreat all that energy away. But retreating the energy away is a small price to pay for a guaranteed full heal of all your Pokemon. Andrew Brawler is going to use Cynthia and Caitlyn, get the Green's Exploration back to his hand, and he gets the Tag Switch. Wow. I mean, he definitely has an attack with Xerneas if he wants it. The question is, does he want it? Or is he going to wait one more turn? We see him powering up that Blacephalon on his bench. Cody Gray looking at potentially sniping 12 damage counters next turn. It is enough to knock out Xerneas, but Andrew Barlow's not going to let it go that easily, I don't think. Andrew's got the switch. He is going in with the Xerneas GX this turn. And we're going to see Xerneas just completely heal this side of the board with that Sanctuary GX. Putting all that damage 
on to the Giratina. Absolutely devastating play for Cody. And I don't actually have a scan of Xerneas GX. I'm sorry, guys. Just fumbling around on PokemonCards.com right now. Like, oh, get me a Xerneas. There we go. I got an X-Man. Sick. X go and give it to you. There he is. Sanctuary GX. Cody is, I would say, in an irreparable spot right now. I don't think that there's anything he can do. Even sniping 12 with Blacephalon right now feels really bad. Because, I mean, Giratina does 130. So, like, sniping 12, it doesn't matter. Because it just, uh, you know, Cody could easily just gust up whoever he wants and hit it for 130, and it would just be, you know, it would be the same difference. So, that 120 snipe on Blacephalon is feeling a little bit lackluster right now. If Cody played something spicy, like, you know... Reset Stamp and the Lusamine Prism Star or something like that and then tried to keep Andrew from gusting around the Blacephalon and then, you know, getting a bonus attack with it or something like that. But it's feeling like Cody is just trying to muscle his way out of this, but Gardevoir and Sylveon does have the leg up in this matchup. At this point, Andrew Barlow does have a ton of energy in play. So I'm wondering, okay, we do got a great catcher coming down. Cody saying, all right, I'm done with the Xerneas. I am not trying to hit into the Xerneas. I think that's fair. But he's going up with the Blacephalon. So, like, you know, what's it matter? I guess he wants to force the Gardevoir and Sylveon to attack. And he doesn't want to get his Blacephalon knocked out by the Xerneas. And I think if Andrew Barlow has a switch or something like that, he can switch his Gardevoir and Sylveon into... The Xerneas, I mean, I think Barlow at this point would love to just keep attacking with Xerneas. Aura Horns does 120 damage. Blacephalon, I think, has 120 hit points. So that would be a nice attack for him to utilize right now while the damage is relevant. Blacephalon has 110 hit points, my bad. 110. So Ore Horns, probably the ideal attack to use. Andrew's going to use Viridian Forest. And we got uh, Manuel asking, is Guardy broken in this format? Guardy's not broken. It is very strong, though. Very, very good. I think it is you know, one of the best greens decks for sure. And, you know, Guardi does have a weakness to decks like Pidgeotto. Doesn't have a great way to beat Pidgeotto. Control decks, I mean, it only has so many energy. And those can get removed. But it has favorable matchups against a lot of other decks. Especially when you consider the fact that it can run Dragon Charm. You know, it can lock decks like Arceus to Alcapalkia and Reshiram out of the game. It can lock decks like Mewbox out of the game. Andrew Barlow getting the Faba play on that uh, on that spell tag. And I'm just thinking to myself, did like Andrew play any other supporters this turn? And I guess not. No, he used Pokegear. Cody Definitely backed up against the wall here. I mean, he is looking at 
needing to take six more prizes. Uh, he could theoretically do it if he is able to attack with Lunala Prism Star this turn and take a one-hit knockout. But I'm not sure if the math even works out on that. He might have needed... It looks like the Giratina is going to be knocking out that Gardevoir Sylveon on the bench. But I don't think that Cody actually has enough damage to take out this active guard. I think that, you know, it's tough. You take this knockout here. Uh, Cody needs to have a spell tag hit in order to sweep up this game with Lunala Prism Star. But I don't think that Cody is going to have enough energy in play to make that dream play work. See, even if Andrew Barlow has six energy in play and Cody Gray has four energy in play, that's only 200 damage. Cody needed a couple of things to happen there in the last couple turns. He needed that spell tag to stick, and then he needed to knock out the clean Gardevoir and Sylveon with... Um, with Lunala Prism Star. And Lunala Prism Star is 160 hit points, so it would have been tough for Andrew to deal with it. And it looks like Andrew is kind of preemptively getting the custom catchers into his hand, making sure that he has all the resources he needs to clean this game up. And he is really just walking it in at this point. Cody's deck is pretty gassed out. Not a lot of options left for him here. Even attacking with the Xerneas. And gusting up a Malamar. I mean, by gusting up the Malamar, he's saying, all right, you do not even have the opportunity to attack with Lunala Prism Star next turn. It's not an option. And Cody being stamped to three. Not a lot of plays left. Can attack with Giratina. Giratina doesn't have enough hit points to survive an attack from any of Andrew Barlow's attackers. And we saw Cody unfortunately had to discard that Espeon Deoxys early in the game. So he couldn't even wall with that. But, you know, Lunala Prism Star showing up a little too little too late. Not going to be able to take that game-winning knockout. He does have Lunala Prism Star. He kind of has to go into the active with Lunala Prism Star. And he could actually use Lunala Prism Star's attack, but Andrew does have the double custom catcher around it. So he actually puts himself in a pretty decent spot if Barlow doesn't have the gust. I mean, because he can accelerate energy with the Lunala with full moon star and then maybe get enough energy into play to potentially knock out a Gardevoir Sylveon but even then if Andrew you know was privy to that uh, he would just uh, retreat the energy off of Xerneas to limit the amount of energy in play for Psy Storm and Cody doesn't actually have a gust left in his deck either I think he's out of cards, out of options. Only has a couple cards left in deck. And it's looking like a retreat. And I think he just has to pass. Full Moon Star. He's going to flip it over. Cody doesn't have it. Andrew Barlow emerging victorious in round four. Moving on to 4-0 undefeated at the Full Grip Games League Tournament so far. Exciting, exciting match. Guardi and Sylveon looking way too powerful, even with a little bit of a rocky start. Uh, Andrew Barlow's deck looking nearly invincible here in this field tonight. Uh, I wonder if we're going to get to see Andrew Barlow paired against maybe Brady Botner next round. I think if any deck can give this Gardevoir and Sylveon deck a run for its money, it'll be Baby Bliss Apollon. So we'll be right back with either an interview with Andrew Barlow or the fifth and final round. Depends on uh, how time is going. 
Uh, thank you guys all so much for being here. We'll be right back. It is time for the fifth and final round of the Full Grip Games League Tournament. Round five getting started here with Andrew Barlow on the left versus Brady Botner on the right. AD Botner is going to be playing that Blagephalon deck. Baby Blacephalon Pidgeotto featuring great catchers. He's got a starter ready to go. Andrew Barlow playing that Gardevoir and Sylveon deck. I said it last round that I think Andrew Barlow's deck very favored against the field unless he plays against the Baby Blacephalon deck. And Brady winning his last round means that he is advancing to 4-0. Both players undefeated in this five-round event. Brady has been very fortunate to dodge Malamar. Andrew Barlow, as we saw, just beat Cody. Both those players were at 3-0 when Andrew won that last round. So, this should be an exciting match. Andrew Barlow actually requested that I not stream it because he said he was about to get blown out. And I was like, Andrew, how fair is that? We just got to watch you blow out a couple of players. <laughs> and then, uh, so, you know, he agreed. He was like, all right, fine, that's fine. So we're going to get to see if Brady can get this baby Blacephalon deck up and rolling i will say that theoretically brady's deck is very favored against guardy and sylveon but this is of course the pokemon trading card game anything can happen and you know brady could start with an awkward hand and i don't exactly see a welder or a draw card in this hand of Brady's. Oh, I do see a welder. He's good to go. Brady's got a welder. He's fine. Totally fine. These guys are looking like they're about to get started. Shaking the hand. And Brady's going to be going first. He has got everything that he needs in this opening hand. A heat factory. Getting things kicked off. with The Pidgey in the active position. He must have drawn into the Jirachi after the Mulligans. Or else he would have definitely started with the Jirachi active and a turn one Elms is absolutely perfect for Brady. He's just going to use the Elm to get some more Pidgeys out of the deck so that he can evolve into Pidgeotto and get that draw established the next turn. Great stuff for Brady here. I think this Deck is an excellent option heading into the Latin American International Championships, to be honest. I mean, if you could just dodge Malamar, uh, it looks like you got favorable matchups all around with so many tag team decks just making up the metagame. Uh, this uh, Blacephalon Pidgeotto deck is a real threat in standard format, as we are seeing. It's very consistent as well. Brady. Looking like he's just going to attach to the Pidgey and pass. Not worried about retreating into the uh, Jirachi just yet. Just going to keep it there. Andrew Barlow. Using Green's Exploration, we can expect him to get a tag call to get himself another Gardevoir and Sylveon Tag Team GX. And I got a question in the chat. Is the Latin American International Championships going to be streamed? Yes, it should be officially streamed by the Pokemon Company. It will not be streamed by any uh, third-party channel. It should be streamed by the Pokemon Company International. Uh, TCPI does all of uh, all the international streams. Looks like Barlow is going to get tag call. Cynthia and Caitlin as well as the Guard War and Sylveon. And no, I will not be attending the Latin American International Championships. No, I uh, save it up for a house this year. So, got some life things on the agenda. You know, I've been putting away all my regional prize money towards the savings for a house. I would like to move out of my apartment uh, this next year. So, that's something we're working towards. And uh, means that I am not going to be spending all my money on flights. <laughs> yeah, right. Yummy sushi. Yes, I feel you. Yeah, next year. Looking to move out around March. And it looks like 
Barlow is going to use that fairy song and pass. Uh, Brady getting in there with Fiery Flint. Going to get himself a ton of fire energy out of the deck. Thinning his deck before using Airmail or Jirachi, Stellar Wish, anything like that. Absolutely a uh, heads up play by Brady doing his order of operations correctly. Got to love that. Real slick play from Brady. Uh, and Brady was able to get his first finish in day two of a regional championship, top 32 in the Richmond, Virginia regional championship. So real proud of him for that finish as well. That was a uh, that was a great finish for Brady and a uh, real step in the right direction for him as a competitive player. So big props to Brady for upping his game and uh, getting that first top 32. Looks like Brady is going to use his stadium to bump the Chaotic Swell and just get that out of the way. He does not actually have a Blacephalon yet, I don't believe. So he really was kind of hampered by that uh, by that swell um, because he could have used the ultra space to go get himself a Blacephalon but now I think he's stuck without a Blacephalon so he's just going to use Elm's Lecture again to thin the deck even more getting more Pidgeys and stuff out of the deck and we may see him retreat into Jirachi this time around and just dig more cards out of the deck he's just getting a really really big hand which is what the the Blacephalon deck wants to do it really wants to have that hand advantage just really draw tons of cards I guess use another airmail with this uh, final Pidgeotto that he has been able to evolve up and we might even see him retreat in Stellar Wish especially if he's got another Jirachi which he does so I really like this play from Brady retreat into Stellar Wish Jirachi, and then if he's got the other Jirachi, he'll probably just drop that onto the bench too. He doesn't want to bench lock himself, but Barlow does have to start taking prizes. So I think it's safe for Brady to bench the other Jirachi and say like, okay, um, you know, you're going to knock out my Jirachi this next turn or something. And then I'm going to want to maybe promote another one. But it looks like Brady's actually going to opt for the other Pidgey. And I think that's fair. Because he could technically throw an escape board onto a Pidgey. Or as we see here, he's attaching the fire energy. And he's going to give the Pidgey you know, what is essentially free retreat by being able to promote the, the Pidgey and retreat it next turn. And Brady is being cognizant of the fact that he doesn't want to put the other Jirachi down on his bench because he doesn't want to get bench locked out in like a weird situation where he just has two Jirachis in play. Brady never wants to have two Jirachis in play. And since Barlow does run custom catchers, he could theoretically gust up a Pidgeotto and KO it this turn. And then Brady would be stuck with a suboptimal board position because he'd have two Jirachis in play. And that's not something that he ever wants to have uh, as this deck. He wants to only ever have one uh, one Jirachi in play. So, heads up play from Brady there, choosing to bench the Pidgey over the Jirachi and giving himself the out to free retreats with the fire energy. We see Barlow, I believe, using Tag Call, but he's got a fairy energy out. He's going to Tag Call and I guess use an energy spinner and use a Cherish Ball. Lots of search cards. Getting out the Xerneas GX. Maybe we start to see some snipe action happen from Xerneas. Could use Overrun. Overrun snipes 20 and 20 to a bench. Theoretically, that damage could build up on multiple Pidgeotos, but that would involve Brady not attacking for pretty much ever. Um, you know, at that point, we'd have to say that uh, you know Brady would have to not do anything for a long time in order to allow those overrun attacks to really build up. So it's going to be Guardian Sylveon using Kaleido Storm, and the ball is in Brady's courts. The Pidgey promoted. He's got the fourth Pidgeotto in his hand too. All four Pidgeotos, the Dream Team is here. He's got four air mails, gets to dig eight cards deep. Looking for 
the cards necessary. And we see him pulling up the sleeves for this one. He just needs to find a Blacephalon, really. In order to you know take the knockout, I think he's got the fires in hand. He's got the welders in hand, but I don't believe Brady has been able to find a Blacephalon yet. I think he's got Victini Prism Star and a Heatran in his hand. And I don't think I see an Ultra Space either. It's just super weird. Like, I think you're actually best off just swinging with Heatran if you have to. Uh, I don't know if it's correct to actually swing with the Victini Prism Star. He doesn't have that many fire energy in the discard pile. I think he's just weldering to the Victini to draw some cards. Then finally finds the Ultra Space. This is the first Blacephalon Brady has been able to find this game. But Brady used his welder onto Victini Prism Star. I wonder if we're going to see an Infinity Attack this turn, or if Brady is just going to save that. I think he has to. Just really odd play. He does throw all the fire energy back into his deck. To be fair, Brady only has to take two knockouts to win. So he's just trying to figure out how to piece it together. I think Brady would be in a good spot to put a skateboard down onto one of these Pidgeotos as well. I would hate to see Andrew Barlow get the gust knockout on this uh, on this Blacephalon next turn. That would be really tough. But I think that that's probably what Barlow is going for if he can. Gotta target down that one Blacephalon. I mean, Brady is drawing a ton of cards every turn with the four Pidgeotos. That is just such a substantial board position. It's insane. But Brady's had a really hard time finding his Blacephalons. And Barlow instantly comes down with the counter to that Ultra Space saying, okay, maybe you prized three Blacephalons game. I don't know. And he's going to try and make it hard for Brady to find those. If Brady does get the Blacephalon gusted up. I mean, it does leave an opening for potentially a Heatran GX play where Brady whisks the energy off of the Victini and actually takes them onto a Heatran. He could deal 250 damage that way, which could give him uh, an option to you know, knock out this active, especially if Andrew Barlow does not use a healing card this turn. Thank you, Valero, in the chat for that uh, posture check, everyone. Remember to sit up straight. Your back will thank you in 10 years. That's pretty hilarious, yes. I'm 30 years old, but I can uh, feel that already, yes. We spend so much of the day sitting. It looks like Andrew Barlow is going to use the reset stamp on Brady. Uh, making sure that he can limit his hand in any way he can. I mean, it might not seem like a lot. You're going to stamp him to six. But, you know, limiting a deck like the Blacephalon deck from a hand of 15 to a, tan of, to a hand of six is a big deal. Because you're saying that, uh, you know, the Pidgey deck's potential hand size will only be... 11 cards next turn maybe something like that 11 new cards because it's going to start with a hand of six then it's going to go to seven with the top deck and then four air mails valero i'm telling you yeah for those of you who are listening on youtube and wondering what i'm talking about i just got that uh the yoga ball chair yeah basically sit on a yoga ball it's been absolutely amazing and then i also got uh I got Aaron in the shop. He ordered a yoga ball chair. And Sean at the shop also ordered a yoga ball chair. 
So we're gonna have three yoga ball chairs, and I know Natalie wants a yoga ball chair too, so we're probably gonna have four yoga ball chairs here at Full Group. Just because, you know, we sit so much. So like, you know, you sit on a yoga ball chair, it activates your core, you know, and it uh, keeps you moving, which is not something that you get in a, in a typical chair. So it's pretty cool. I'll show off the chair. I get, it's really, it's underneath my desk right now. I don't know if I have access to it. I don't sit on it when I cast tournaments because, you know, it would be ridiculous doing an interview on my ball chair. <laughs> but while I'm doing PTCGO gameplay, though, oh, yeah. It keeps things real nice. I can't think of a better way to sort cards than on a yoga ball chair. All right, Brady's doing a bunch of stuff. He finally got himself a welder here, and he's got uh, Blacephalon in the active. Brady's got the welder onto his active Blacephalon. And we'll draw three cards. Does he have the fire energy he needs to take this knockout? It would be devastating if he's short. I think he might be short. I think he needed to hit a fiery flint or a fire crystal. I don't think he hit either. Oh, my goodness. I think he's only got 150 in his hand right now. He'd have to bring up the other one. He does have a gust in his hand. So he can gust up the other guardy and take it for a knockout. I believe. He has to do that. He can't be short. Oh, he's just gonna use... Wow, Blazer. He doesn't opt for the gust play. And he's saying maybe Andrew doesn't have a switch. I'm not sure. Does Andrew have a switch in his hand? Oh my gosh, I think Brady's wager paid off. I don't think Andrew Barlow has a switch. Insane. He's stuck with the Cynthia and Caitlyn. But... Brady is not getting punished. Insane turn of events. Brady doesn't have the knockout. Andrew Barlow had Kaleido stormed all of the energy off of the active, thinking for sure it was about to get knocked out. And that's a pass. And sure enough, Brady's next top deck is literally the fire crystal that he needed to knock out. And the next card off airmail is Fiery Flint. So he's got all the energy he needs now to take out all, you know, the knockouts he wants. I mean, he's pretty much got things under control. But that Blacephalon hanging on here is huge. It saves Brady three energy. It saves Brady having to welder this turn. That was a huge rip for Brady and a huge whiff for Barlow. Brady's using the Fiery Flint now, discarding Jirachi and a Fire Energy. Going to go get four energy out of the deck. He does need to be very careful. Uh, Victini Prism Star is already down. So he needs to be careful of his energy, making sure that he's counting, making sure that he does not run out because the energy left in his deck, that's all the energy he has for the rest of the game. Now he's got the energy in hand. He is just going to discard. Uh, with the Blazer, actually, he only needs to discard five. So the Blazer math was actually super relevant. That's insane. And we can imagine that Barlow is for sure going for a reset stamp here off the greens. He's got Xerneas GX in the active position. 
And Andrew Barlow intelligently realizing that he needs to force Brady to try and take eight prizes by forcing him to take out a tag team Pokemon and then a regular GX and then another tag team, force Brady into the eight prize game, stamp him, hit him with Xerneas, Aura Horns does 120 damage. It's enough to knock out the Blacephalon. So you can start chewing through this army that Brady has. But the Stamp to 3, how much can a Stamp to 3 really do with four Pidgeotos on the deck? Each of these Pidgeotos able to airmail. Look at the top two cards of the deck. Keep one, put one on the bottom of the deck. So even a Stamp to 3, he gets one top deck. That's four cards. And then he gets to see eight more cards off the top, of which he can pick four. So here we go. First airmail. I mean, the dream is for Brady to get Welder, Blocephalon. I mean, he could do it. He's already got the Welder, and he's got a great catcher in his hand. He could do it with Heatran. So I think you keep the Heatran off that airmail. Going in again, finds gear and a skateboard. And the last card is Fiery Flint. I think he might have it. We'll have to see what his hand looks like. Unless he didn't choose the Heatran. I don't think he chose the Heatran. I don't think he chose the Heatran. I think he had to choose Heatran off that. You can win with Heatran. You haven't GX'd yet. Brady's going to take another Fire Crystal. And he doesn't have it. I think if he chose Heatran, he could deal 150 damage on the bench. Brady did not choose Heatran on that airmail. He picked whatever the other card was. And I think Heatran was just a better grab. So now Brady's just in a weird spot where he's got to sack something he doesn't want to. Brady cannot bench anything. That's very important. If Brady benches something, he gets bench locked. And he could lose. Heatran would not KO with the GX? Oh, you're right. Heatran was short. Never mind, guys. I thought it was 110 on the bench guard, Sylvian. I see now. You guys are correct. I have old boomer eyes and cannot see that it's actually 100 damage on that bench guardy. I thought it was 110. My bad, y'all. Thanks, Beck, for the, uh, for the math check there. Yeah, so I guess Heatran was never going to get there. So that's a heads-up play from Brady. I guess it makes sense. He had to go for the Blissephalon. And... Barlow is going to use his GX attack, fully healing that Garden Force Sylvia on the bench. I mean, without another reset stamp, though, Brady just has to airmail into a Blocephalon, and it should be game over, I think. Hopefully, he's got enough energy left in the deck. It could be close. He's going for it, though. He's thinning the energy out of the deck first. And he's seeing, all right, how much energy do I actually have left? Brady might be actually out of energy. I'm not sure how much... Energy, hopefully he's got a ton of fire crystals in his hand. Because it's looking like his energy situation is a little bit suspect. With only one energy left in the deck. And we see Andrew Barlow starting to count his resources. That's a ton of fire energy in that discard pile. Brady is going to start using airmail. Needs to find his Blacephalon. He's got the Blacephalon, but does he have enough juice? Let's see. He's got three energy back there. And he's got Welder onto the Blacephalon to draw three more cards. 
He's got a gigantic hand, but does he have it? Retreat. Two more fire crystals, bringing six energy back. Brady had six. Wow. Had three fire crystals in the hand. Great catcher up. The Guard of Orsillion, and that's it. Brady taking the tournament down with baby Blacephalon. Getting in there. Wow. And actually, uh, pretty, uh, pretty tight final game there. Despite Andrew Barlow thinking that he had no shot. He definitely had a shot. Uh, Brady's deck was not exactly cooperating with him for a little while there. But in the end, was able to pull it off 5-0 with Baby Blacephalon at the Full Grip Games League Tournament. Congrats to Brady and Andrew Barlow both for an awesome showing. <laughs> All right, we got Brady here. 5-0 at the League Tournament with Baby Blacephalon. Yeah. Did you anticipate it going this well? Um, I thought if I didn't play against Malmar, I would, so... <laughs> Cheers, bro. <laughs> yeah. So what did you play against the round before this last one? Uh, another Greens versus Arte. So, easy. Yep. Right? Yep. Now, was this your most stressful game of the day no um against the peak ROM, i just kind of draw pass until i like really got it got it going <laughs> oh okay <laughs> yeah so definitely the second most it second was, most yeah. stressful because uh you were having a little bit of a hard time finding your blue there early yeah uh <laughs> yeah they're very elusive when you can't play the ultra face down <laughs> no uh yeah they were just skipping out on work you know uh, air mail so you know i was thinking maybe brady prize three yeah like, I, went, I, I went prize one <laughs> only prize one uh but yes the chaotic swell very tough for your deck to actually yeah, work through sure. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we saw you, you get that out the way, but then you have to find your other ultra space. Right. There's only, like, a couple of the deck. Yeah. Two three. or three. Three, yeah. yeah. So, uh... And that, I one of those also. So. Oh, oh, yeah, well, that's lit. <laughs> yeah. So the Chaotic Swell, uh, Chaotic Swell was definitely a hindrance for you. For sure. Um, now, the turn you opted to go in and Blazer, walk us through, walk us through that play, because you had the Gust, and you could have... Were you short on the one? I had three bench? energy in hand, uh, so you're, uh, uh, I was... I was messing up that math left and right. Uh, okay. I thought there was 110 on the bench. So, yeah. no, it was 100, on, <laughs> it was 100 nice. on the bench. Yeah, yeah, it was 100 on the bench. So, you blazer that turn. Were you worried that he was going to knock out your Blacephalon? Like, um, have the switch and just, like, and then maybe were you going to be short on energy for game? Uh, I mean, I was worried to knock out the Blacephalon, but I still had energy. You think you yeah. have plenty of energy yeah. to close but Actually, game I think blazering was actually, like, incorrect there. I think I should have just passed. Because if I hit a um, an energy and do 60, then you can uh, Sanctuary all the damage off and knock all the stuff on. <laughs> but he was 10 short otherwise. So. But then you only had to discard five for the knockout. Yeah, I mean, that worked the out. The gas. It worked out nice. <laughs> uh, so that was, uh, that was a pretty clutch play. That was really exciting for sure. And uh, yeah, so you know, final thoughts on this deck. Do you think it's a deck we'll see at the Latin American International Championships? Yeah, I think people will definitely play it. For yeah, sure. I mean, it seems very good if you just like, think you can miss Malmar. Free matchups. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I love the built-in draw engine, too. Any deck that gets to play Pidgeoto is like a pretty good deck. Pid oh, what, Pidgeoto? <laughs> <laughs> what a nice card. Uh, what a nice card. One Just... supporter finds both guys. <laughs> Surely. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, well, congrats, Brady. You. And, uh, you know, uh, well played. Thanks. <laughs> That's it for the Fulker Games League Tournament. Thank you guys all so much for hanging out tonight. Uh, thank you so much for the bits, the subs, all the support. Big shout out to the mods for doing an incredible job with the community as well. If you're sub to the channel, make sure to check out the sub-only Discord. You can access it uh, by linking your Discord account to your Twitch accounts where we talk Pokemon. I post all my deck lists in there, and it's a, a great space for us to build community for the Pokemon trading card game. Also, make sure to check out FullGripGames.com for all your trading card game singles, sleeves, deck boxes, Things like that. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for supporting the store at Full Grip. Supporting Full Grip directly supports Tricky Jim and me and the Pokemon uh, trading card community as a whole, in my opinion. So awesome stuff. Thank you guys so much for supporting the shop. Make sure to check out FullGripCodes.com as well for instant PTCGO code delivery. We're always updating the codes website with more codes uh and getting them updated all the time so make sure to check back if you haven't done so recently we're gonna kick things over to riley and jw for tag team so make sure to give them a uh, a good time thank you so much for everything tonight chat i am exhausted and i'm gonna go have myself some dinner so cheers you guys have a good one and uh, make sure to tell riley and jw i said hey deuces peace